you have way more in common with a professional athlete than you think. How? Stay tuned. Cue the music. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Good Leader Podcast. We are on a mission to increase the world's leadership capacity because we believe the world needs better leaders, and you are one of them. So thanks for joining us. Speaking of better leaders, Anj, Jared. we're going to need you to step up here, okay? Oh, my um, God. <laughs> just step up. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wide receiver mode. Wide receiver, yeah, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt wide receiver mode. Now nah, let's not talk about that. My fantasy football team is trash, and I don't like it. Puts me in a bad mood. I'm grateful for your trade. I needed some running back. Speaking of sports, that was a win-win. I got it a was. Good, I, got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about Chris Godwin, so we'll I see. I did, too. That's why I didn't want to give him up. I had a good feeling about it, and I, I also I kind of like the play. I have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, I know. so I'm going to see who does what. I might even just play both of them. That's good. It's a guarantee. Well, if you end up looking to trade back, I might take him well, back. So you know me. I you only might. play the game to trade. That's, I don't care if I want to lose. That's what I told myself. I was I like, at the end of the day, trade. if I want him back, I might be able to get him back. You sure can. You, you could get him back today. <laughs> what do you need to step up for? Rochelle, does that make sense to you? What do you think? Should I Was Godwin from Montgomery a good trade? Good or bad? Where does that fall in the <laughs> research yeah, scale. no worries. Um, so I'm just going to use my own experience, which is absolutely zero. And I'm going to say that was a, a really terrible trade. Actually. For me or for Anj? Uh, Ange. I don't, yeah, for I'll Ange. Sorry. I like Sorry, like Ange. Sorry, Ange. It's not going to be good. Montgomery got hurt. Jameer Gibbs and is That's why I almost didn't do it. I was like, Montgomery's going to get injured, man. Well, here's the thing. I'm bringing that up happening. because today we're talking about professional athletes. Not all the day, you know, don't tune us down if you're not a sports person. You know, if you're a sports, go sports. If there's a ball or a goal, I hope you score and I hope that you win. Do you guys, have you guys know that song? No. What do clever. you think? I'm a, I'm a really yeah. like 10 <laughs> points for Gryffindor you have a quiet kind of person. Here. I'm like, wow, there was oh, a, somebody what moving. A, oh. oh, 10 points for Gryffindor. I'm, that's really me. I just, just so you know, that's my level wow. of sports. I just hope they wow. have a good time. I think it might be a commercial that he's alluding wow. to right now. No, it's a parody. It's a, oh, it's okay. a group of, um, it's a, these two female comedians. I can't remember. They're like. Garfunkel and Oats or something. I can't oh. remember their duo what? name. What? Interesting. They're pretty funny. They have some, they have parody videos and, okay, did you watch, um, what's the show with all the nerds? Um, the, um, Big Bang Theory. Yes. Yeah. So, I think, um, Cuther Polly had a girlfriend for a while. She had short black hair. Uh -huh. She's one of the comedians that's oh, in this. Oh, yeah, yeah, Anyway, okay. they've got really, and so they say, sports go sports. They know nothing about sports. So they're like, if there's <laughs> oh, a ball or a goal, I hope you win. And I hope that you win. I oh, hope, that's you know, so, yeah. I feel, I, was like, that, I think we're showing you did something really good, I hope they do it again. Like, you know, <laughs> you told me to come here so I could see that replay. I don't have any clues. So, yay, yay, yay. Like, <laughs> It's I'm really very funny. much like I it's like that clever. color uniform. I'm cheering for them. Yeah, like, yeah. You joined our fantasy football draft on and picked based on their looks. Yes, yes. Actually, though, I thought different about it. than what some other I thought about people it, picked on. And it was, I was great. Like, I feel I was like, great about. It's actually team. not a bad strategy because I'm thinking uh, a lot of the professional football players. I'm like, well, if you just went on looks, that'd be pretty good. It, I, was I mean, to think that's of hard to think of. A ugly, yeah, that would, like it was a really good pick though, and I was Thank like, you. yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, Derrick Henry, I don't think Derrick Henry's very good looking. Derrick Henry was literally the one I was, I was like, gonna eh, say. He's not a very good looking yeah. dude. Or Dell. So did you draft Jalen Hurts? Girl, I cannot tell you. Is Jalen Hurts good looking? I, oh yeah. Show me really? a picture Jaylen and Hurts? I'll be like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, I drafted them. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't sure. say he's a bad guy. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say he's oh, a bad looking guy, but I wouldn't say he's the best looking football player did going you draft right now. Travis? I don't know. She oh. tried. I think someone oh, might well, have been Jalen Hurts is way better looking than Travis I drafted Patrick Mahomes. I was like, I just like a mustache. Hurts over Kelsey. Yeah, oh, really? for sure. That's what I'm saying. For You're sure. acting like Kelsey. No, wait. He is. Hurts is better than Kelsey. No, Kelsey has the personality. The close. personality. I guess. Okay? I heard his personality, too. It depends what over season Kelsey. you're in, Jared. That's true. Good point. You know what? We are talking about seasons. We are talking about optimizing your time, and you are more like a professional athlete than you think. But before we get into that, I got a fun game. I looked up the top 10 earners among athletes. OK, OK, so you're going to try to guess the top earners, but we're going to put a spin on it because I had a feeling it was a little sports go sports on, <laughs> you know, on some of the, the some of the participants. Like, you're trying to, so you're going to work as a team and I'm going to give you a sport and you're going to tell me a number. You're, all you gotta do is guess a number. Okay? OK, and it's a top 10 list. So I would encourage you not to guess more than 10. I'm going to give you a sport and you tell me how many of the top 10 earners come from that sport. Make sense? So in other words, I'm going to say professional football, American football, professional American football. How many of the top 10 okay, earners yep. are professional mm -hmm. football, American football players? Can we have the categories first? Sports first? 
Uh, like, will we sure. know them all? Are we talking of you know worldwide? Them all. I'm not gonna, I mean, yeah. Okay, yes, we're people. talking worldwide. Yep. We are. But we're not just talking America. That's my thing. It's no, like, yeah, I guess that's United what States. I was wondering. No, worldwide. Yeah, okay. yeah this is right. worldwide. This is from Forbes. It's sure. the top earners, the top earning athletes okay. of the last year. This wow. is a 2024 list, if I looked right. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, it's I, up, I, I, I don't know when the date was, but yeah. it's they're all new. They're all relevant. Okay. All right. First sport, American football. How many of the top 10 were American football players? Jess, give me a number. Five. Five. Rochelle, give me a number. I'm going to say three. Three. Ange, give me a number. Four. Four. The answer is one. You oh, really? a bit. Just one. You know that who is shocking. It is shocking, right? Just one. No, no, that, uh, that's not shocking. Oh my god! Not Wait, Cur- is he current? Yeah, definitely. These are all current. These They're are all playing current right athletes. now. Yeah, all current athletes. Oh, Kirk Cousins. Nope, Lamar Dang. Jackson. Oh, that Lamar sure. Jackson. That tracks. Yeah, so that I tracks. think I think all the new contracts. To yeah. your point, you really know football. They have yeah. not kicked in yet because mm-hmm. I think Mahomes have to be on the list next year. Because he I got half he a billion. I, th- I thought he would too, but he's not. Lamar. Yeah, Lamar did get more than him though on a per year basis. He did, yeah. I think uh, Mahomes is bigger, all you know, further. Overall, all right, here we go. yeah. Baseball. How many baseball players made the top ten? Ons, give me a guess. Three. Rochelle, give me a guess. Zero. Um, my guess is also zero. Give yourselves a point. Zero baseball players in the top <laughs> ten. I, I was see. like, who won baseball? Points. Keep tracking on points. If yeah. football is only one, yeah, baseball literally. is definitely zero. All right, here we go. How many golfers made the list? Oh. Golfers, professional golfers made the list. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, wow. Isn't it? This is kind of, golf. I tried to make this more fun for you. You know, if you're just having to guess that's names, a, that's be a like, wild card. I don't know names. Yeah, that is a wild card. It is. Especially with the live tour. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Okay, good. Thank you. No problem. I feel... It's a Saudi Arabian now. league that come in, came in and bought a lot of players Ooh. Yeah, for Buku's of bucks. It was a big turmoil. I'm going to go with two. Two. That was going to be mine. You I'm going to say, I'm gonna say one. You I'm going to say, say one. Number. Okay, two. The answer is one. Oh, oh Jim Rohn. you guys. Yes. I'm doing it was, so you're good. Killing it. it was because of that. It was because of that. All right, here we go. How about soccer players? Oh. Worldwide football. Soccer players. I legitimately think list. like eight. Well, that's it's, it's your game. It's your guess. Okay, I'm going to say eight. Okay. I'm going to go three. Actually, 18. Sorry. I'm, I'm gonna sticking say, to I mean, it. I'm going to say five. I'm sticking to it. I already gave you some numbers. <laughs> I'm sticking to <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah, fine. bad math. It's yeah, going to be too yeah. high. I'm going to say five. Five is correct. Oh, wow. that was only five. three off. That was only three yeah, off. but they already knew. That means the rest <laughs> of them had to be. It is the biggest sport in the world. <laughs> how, many, how many were professional basketball players? <laughs> that was, I was like, we've done all the sports. So yeah, who we else did do basketball. I know, we did players. Yeah. All right. How many? Two. How many more categories do we have? I'm not telling you that. Okay. That would that would just be this would then be a math game. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here and I'm doing the math. And <laughs> right. I'm like, you got right. three seconds. Two, two seconds. Two. A two. The answer is three. Oh. Three. That's all we had left. I know. I, I, three is all we had left. I almost more thought it was football. three. More I was than really like, three. man, there's wow. cricket, there's rugby. Yeah, but like, no, nobody in the top ten. That's what was throwing me off. But that makes sense. They're not in the top ten. Nobody in the top ten. So it was LeBron, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Steph Curry made the top. All right. Nice. That hey, makes sense. You know what? You can accuse me of being a lot of things. You can say a lot of things about me that are probably true. A lot of negative things. I'm not the world's greatest person. I'm not the world's most empathetic leader. What I am not. Externally. What I am not is overtly sexist. So oh my. let's guess the women's list. That's right, ladies that and gentlemen. Is, I have you know the top. What? I, I appreciate this. I actually. have the top 10 earning female athletes. Feminist okay? of the year. Jared Moore. All right. Sport number. <laughs> Thank you. Oh appreciate God. that. Yeah, I mean. Ghost point for that. Yeah, his Thank staff you. shows that a Thank little you. bit. So. All right, here we go. Um, all right, give me how many of the top female athletes, according to Forbes, uh-huh. are tennis players? Ooh. Oh, good. wow, that's hard. <gasps> good. Good. <laughs> three. I'm going to say three. I, right. Mine was three. 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 Mine three. Was you guess the same number. I mean, I two. know. Yeah. Two. The answer, you incorrect. Want to guess again? Five. Five. Wow. What no, I'm know. not saying it's five. She's guessing. I'm giving uh, you a second guess. You all miss. I'm going to give you oh, another guess. Oh, we get it. I'm okay. give you I think guess. it's Everybody more. What did you say, Jess? Uh, two. You said two. What did you say? Mm-hmm. I said three. She said three. Yeah. No. So uh, yeah. second guess is five. Can Can we know if it's higher or lower? Like it's if, higher than three. I will tell you that. Okay, great. You are yeah. higher than three. I'm going yeah. to stick with five. You all are good about yeah, it. Five, yeah. Four. Five. The answer is nine. <gasps> Nine of the top Shut ten. Now this up. is fascinating. Well, now isn't why it? didn't I guess eight? Nine there? of what? the top eight. nine of the top ten is crazy. Okay, I mean obviously what there's a the huge world? disparity in earning, but nine. <laughs> yeah, literally. But nine of the top ten. Tennis. It's tennis. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's it. The only other Women's one. Tennis is to, soccer. Killing not it. soccer. You basketball? would never guess. Basketball? You would never. Nope. Cricket. No basketball Rugby? players are drastically under gymnastics. No. 
Swimming. It is Olympics, though. Think Olympics. Swimming. Nope, not swimming. Uh, Freestyle skiing. Okay, what? The yeah. number two, no, there's, there's evidently a phenom girl. I don't even know who she is, but she was the number two earner. So freestyle skiing. I think what, she was. What she, country is she from? I think China. Oh, I don't know. Okay. That could be wrong. Let me uh, let me fact check myself. Sorry, I, I should have like, already I, known that's this. That's my job. I can do that. Uh, yeah, um, it's a Forbes list. I can tell you really quickly because I already have to pull up. And then, but number eleven was not tennis. Want to guess that sport? You haven't guessed it yet. Female so, athletes. It's not soccer. Not soccer. soccer. Mm. Skiing. Basketball. Nope. 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 Smart. Skiing smart. was number two. She's the number two freestyle skier. She is from China. I was right. Okay. Where is it? Eileen Gu. She is freestyle skiing from China. She's 20 years old. Whew. On the field, she made $100,000. Off the field, she made $22 million. Mm, whoa. That's her. Doing what? Well, endorsements. Million. Endorsements. Yeah, right. I mean, off the field just basically means all their endorsements. So, number 11 was the golfer. Number one golfer in the world. Mm, nice. I can't remember her name. She's on commercials. What's her name? Wow. Nelly Corda. That's her name. Nelly. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen her. Yep. All right. There you go. Oh. Wow. That's what yeah, now, when we get back from the break. The I'm gonna horse. tell you how you are more like these athletes than you think. Paradigm Shift's t- team building resources are available in our online store. Medium Talk, Wordles, Leader vs. Leader, AI cards, and much more. You can buy your card decks today at www.ps.company slash store. I love Wordles. I love Medium Talk cards. We're talking time management today. You are more like a professional athlete in this way. I thought of this. This is a little bit of Paradigm Shift. Now, we work for a company called Paradigm Shift, so I'm being a little on the nose here, but I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw this like theoretical question out there to help formulate the way you think about your time differently. And remember, I said you're more like a professional athlete than you think. Have you ever heard of these professional athletes, Anj? I know you have, that are complete busts or bums and they squander their their opportunities, Mm -hmm. their livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what do you think when you when you hear those stories? What, I know. what do I think about them? I know. This is not prepped. This is not rehearsed. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about them? This is like a, a Jess commercial. It's unrehearsed and unprepared. Hey. What do you got? You've been doing great over there. The they, weren't, the they weren't ready for the Maybe. That's nice. That's nice. That's a, uh, I think that's Trying nice. to be externally I think that's a empathetic. I was so. going to say, I think that's a graceful way to think about it. You know what I think most people Wasted think about opportunity. What a waste. Are yeah. you kidding me? You're a professional athlete. You are a high draft pick. You're making millions of dollars a year. Yeah. And all you've got to do is keep your head on straight. All you got to do is show up like, especially when you hear about lazy athletes or people that don't show up practice. You know what I'm talking about over there, Jess? Sure do. I think on the, I think on the sports scale, you're right in the middle here. Okay. Anj is going to be number one. You're number two. Rochelle's number three. That's what it seems like to me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just interpreting it off of what you've said about sports. And Rochelle's in our league. That's hilarious. Yeah. Jess. I refuse to be in the league. It's How just you, stupid. Uh, wow. That was unnecessarily, <laughs> that was rude. That was just, come on. Wow, that was mean. Hey, it's what not mean my spirited it's not, thing to say. It's not my season. Well, that's fine. Not liking it is your thing, but you'd be like, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> that's rude. Rude. Stupid. She put Jeez. a rainbow at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me what you think about <laughs> athletes. Don't worry, we'll talk about more stupid things. What do I up. think TikTok's about athletes? on my list today. Oh, same. Um, <laughs> athletes, yeah. I think, put in a lot of mental physical work to be paid a high amount to entertain people um i know what it takes for me to put in like physical labor Mm -hmm. so obviously i'm not an athlete so i just can't even imagine that's what you do and that's what you're thinking about all day 24 7 like your habits are a reflection of how you perform and people are always talking about you and your the way you perform matters to people's bank accounts like that is kind of crazy to me. I think that they might be, you know, a little underrated when it comes to work ethic. Underrated? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think well, the people with that, do have high work ethic. People with that type of opinion, you know, like, they're like, well, maybe if you think like a player is lazy. Mm-hmm. But you have no idea like what they put yeah. in behind the scenes. Is well, I, I mean, I, I think a lot of people, and this is where I'm coming from, was saying you're more like an athlete than you think. Many of us, when we see or hear those, especially those of us that follow sports closely, it's like, oh my gosh, what a wasted opportunity. Was and all you got to do is show up and work hard mm-hmm. or even just show up to practice or whatever, or try your effort. I want to challenge you to approach your day. We're talking about time management, thinking of your day the way you would judge a professional athlete. So in other words, what Jess just said, well, they have to spend an incredible amount of time honing their craft. And if you just look at, if I was, I am not a professional athlete, I know. Shocking. Tough to tell. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm deceptive on the court, but I'm nowhere near a professional athlete. So I think from the outside looking in, though, there are some things that we could assume and given like, well, you should put that into your day. Working out. If you're a professional athlete, you should work out every day. Right. Mm-hmm. On, you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm thinking of a, a well, what should a professional athlete do every day? Is there anything else that comes to your mind? You know, once again, we're not professional sleep. athletes. We're just, sleep. You should take care of yourself. You should sleep. For sure. Oh, you should work, work out. Eating, eating habits. Eating habits. Great. You know what I'm saying? There are yeah. these things that even though, because we all have bodies, we are all athletes, according to Nike. So <laughs> we, we know, oh, wow, to be on that high level, though, you're a professional athlete. You should be working out every day, taking care of yourself. You know, if you're a basketball player, you should be probably shooting, dribbling, or passing. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those types of things. But then when we put our own lens, I know that we're not multimillionaires. But we should do, we should view our own time management and our own days in the same way. Like right. there are things, in other words, that it's like, well, if, if you can remove yourself from your firsthand view and go, wow, if I was just from the outside looking in, there are probably some things that are obvious. Like, wow, why shouldn't I be doing that? Last On the last episode, we talked about sleep. That's one that I think if you're going like, man, I'm tired all the time. Well, you're judging the professional athlete. Like, why don't they just work out? Like, you should mm. you should work out every day. Yeah. Judge yourself the same way. Oh, I should go to bed earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We don't have the same public humiliation that an athlete does that falls from grace. But it's the same level of personal onus. It's the same level of like, wow, wow, if I just did that simple thing, I probably would be more successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's easy for us to judge the superstars mm-hmm. or even like celebrities or whatever. And we just go, oh, my gosh, all you had to do was like, wow, what a life. Well, it's actually, I think, the same level of difficulty. We give ourselves a pass and we judge them very harshly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So today, I want us to approach time management the same way. Not just think about, oh, okay, what are some tips and tricks? We might share some of those. But it's really about, wow, what are the things that if I was to look from the outside looking in, I'd be very judgmental of myself. True. <laughs> if I could remove, you know, wow. If someone was paying me millions and millions of dollars yes. to show up. To show up. Where do I need to show oh, up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where should I show up better? Well, you're not getting paid millions of dollars, but you're getting paid a salary, you're probably earning a income some way. And it's like, that's why on last episode, we talked about reading. It's like, wow, if I read, I will probably be more successful in my job. Why aren't you reading? Oh, if I network, if I connect, well, why aren't you doing those things? Mm-hmm. That's the kind of things when we're talking about optimizing your life, I wanted to give us a new way to look at it today instead of just thinking, okay, I need to do better or what are some hacks, but really try to change the frame. And that's where I came up with the athletes. Now, when we talk about um, top tips, though, I wanted us to hit these social media stats very quickly. Do you, one of you ladies have those pulled up? Because sure these social media stats blow our minds. We talk about the easy stuff, low-hanging fruit, where are we wasting time, how much time is spent on social media. This is from um, uh, a fairly recent information. I can't remember when it was, um, but let me, hear, yep. let me hear some of that data. What? How much time do we spend on social media, ladies? Um, in 2024, the average time spent on social media decreased by 5.3% to 143 minutes per day compared to the 151 minutes per day in 2023. So that's the number I want to get. 143 minutes? Yep. So that's day. over two hours. Per day. Um, if I'm doing the math 23 right. 23 minutes. Two hours and 23 minutes. Yep. Okay, yeah. It's almost two and a half hours per day. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay, and then it tells like, I think YouTube is the most one. They consider YouTube social media. Yeah. Do y'all consider YouTube social media? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I do. Really? Yeah. Okay, I don't. I mean, obviously like, everyone like blogging, else does. But it's like people I think it following dep- stories. It depends how you use it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, everything you read considers it social media. So I'm not trying to argue that it isn't. I'm just saying when you say, Jared, list five social media sites. I'm yeah. going to go Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. YouTube, yeah. They do uh, have a- and then I'm even going to go, uh, I don't know. Friendster, MySpace, (laughs) Zanga. They do have a new feature on YouTube that is like TikTok and Reels where you watch shorts. And so people have started using that. I guess that's true. That's the same thing as TikTok, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't use it for that, you know, so I get where you're coming from. Anyway, but YouTube, I think, is the most widely consumed. Seven minutes and 25 seconds average. Is the average session on YouTube. But of that, which one's the most consumed? It, like, is it TikTok or is it YouTube? YouTube it's, has the highest average session. Okay, YouTube has the highest average session. But most consumed is it's TikTok, TikTok. Okay. At, at 34 hours. Yeah. And then YouTube's right underneath it. Wait, 20. 34 hours like a month? Monthly so, usage. Yeah, monthly. 34 hours a month? More than an hour? A- well, yeah, if the average amount is oh, yeah. two and a half hours. Gosh. You're spending an hour and of you that can, on TikTok. The thing about it is that you can get so lost in there. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Deep dive. You the and you holes. don't even know your time. 
I recently, we're talking about hacks. Go for it. I have, I've done this in a million different ways before, but lately I have like a, a time, like I can only be, you know, on social media or whatever for 15 minutes a day on my phone is mm -hmm. what I have. Now, believe it or not, so I know the- do you block it or do you yeah, have- like, it goes off. It, it like okay. goes off and then you have a code that you have to type in to get back in. Believe it or not, I know the code to my phone, so I just go ahead and get it right back. I was going to say, yeah. does yes. that work? I would now, assume if you're like, yeah, I just- uh, Two hacks this. One, like I used to do this button. in another life. I would put it on okay. and actually only jumped. My husband had the code, so he made the code. He had oh, it. Oh, okay. And I that's actually, cool. if it locked me out, I couldn't get back in. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I started getting pretty frustrated <laughs> by that. And so um, it did. It worked for a little while. Screw this. It worked for a little while. Code. Yeah, it was. But it was when we had like newborns and stuff. And I was like, I need to do something with my life outside. Only the. Yeah. New. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was great. I actually do recommend it. It helped for a time. Right now, though, I have it and I know the code. But what it does tell me is like I was on Instagram yesterday and I was scrolling and it times you out at 15 minutes every time. OK. And then when it times you out, you put the code in and then it asks you, do you want another 15 minutes? Do you want one more hour mm. or do you want unlimited time for the day? So I always just give myself an extra 15 minutes and I am mind blown. It, you, 15 minutes later comes right back up and I'm like, <laughs> I've already been on this thing for 15 minutes. I didn't even realize it. Wow. So that has okay. actually helped. It's just a like, remind, like, wow, do I really? It just is like almost a pause in the moment of, do I really want to keep going on this? And then mm -hmm. I, you know, hit cancel and I don't. But anyway, it's been fascinating to realize um, how quickly I get to 15 minutes. I want to piggyback time. on that because I have a similar experience, but in a different way. So I know that I want to get on TikTok and I do want to consume it, but to avoid, it's a double positive here, to mm -hmm. avoid doing it at night or when I'm supposed to be doing something else, I do it when I'm doing cardio. Not okay. only am okay. I doubling down on, you know, doing two things at once, but also That's it makes good. the time go by yeah, so it much does. quicker it because really does. I'm looking, I'm watching videos and I just scroll and before you know it, an hour has passed. Yep. Cause it's like nothing. I, like I that. literally, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. That's a good tip. That's a good hack. I like that. Yep. You've been working out Jess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm doing this thing called 75 hard. I don't Very know. Cool. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I haven't. That sounds cool though. Oh, well God, there's so many. Okay. 75 hard. I'll have to, to check it. that out. Yeah. Look it up. Give it a Google. I like that. I like what you're saying. And that's what we're talking about. Optimizing life. I've optimized and this whole social media. I just think it was important for us. I don't know that we're going to spend the entire episode here, but when I saw these raw numbers, I, I mean, that is staggering to me. Two hours and 23 minutes is a lot of life Yep. every yeah. day. Now, I, I mean, yep. I'm curious of the age range. I'm assuming that probably tilts younger. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of an obvious statement, but I'm curious how young I think yeah. when I looked at it, like 16 to 24 year old females is mm -hmm. the highest mm -hmm. demographic with up to three hours. Women aged 16 to 24 spend the most time on social media with two hours and 59 minutes per day. Yep. I think. Wow. That's a three hours, three hours. Women aged 16 to 24 basically spent average. Okay. Three hours per day. Um, the lowest, one of the lowest, could you guess what the lowest 40, is? 42 year old men with jobs. <laughs> Very close. The lowest daily usage <laughs> is men and women. Okay. Aged 55 to oh. 64. Okay. With women spending one hour well, and yeah. 46 minutes and men one hour and 30. Well, but how high do they, I mean, I'm sure, okay, 90 plus year old men, <laughs> yeah. I would guess. It is seems the like slowest. that's the highest they went. So they, they cut off <laughs> at 64. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, now, what's let's get the source because if you're curious and you really want to dive into these numbers, I think it's powerful, especially if you are a leader working with teams, with groups. I don't know how you would specifically use this. I think just having the information sometimes is powerful, just even in our everyday life. That's why we're bringing up here to go, wow, how much time do I actually spend on that? So let's give that quick reference. Where are we finding these numbers? Soax. 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 S-O-A-X dot com. So X and so you can research, Google it up, but these numbers are staggering. So today we're trying to flip this and just show, okay, if I'm, if I'm spending that much time, it is this professional athlete kind of meta exercise that I want you to do and go, wow, if I, if I could remove myself from myself <laughs> and I was just to look at my life and judge it, you might not be spending two and a half hours on social media, but numbers don't lie. You're probably somewhere in that vicinity. Maybe you're not, but if you would look at yourself and say, wow, how much time proactively will I allow myself? Like Andre was saying, okay, mm -hmm. I, I do, I'm not going to cut it out of my life. I mm -hmm. want to spend it, but I'm going to put this timer on here. Um, 
Jess has come up with a great hack of like, I want to be on this. This is part of my life. Cause I think it is recreation. Recreation is mm-hmm. important. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the evils of social media um, can sometimes be overblown. It's like, well, if you want to check it out as entertainment, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you do it while you're working out. I've gone the other way. I've completely removed it from my life. I'm only on LinkedIn. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, it, because every time I just can't, it's to me, it's like a drug. I do. Once I get on yeah, there, I'm like, oh, I just keep using it. Kind of consumes my life too. Well, LinkedIn's getting around to where they're yeah. like, hey, check out these reels. Check out these yeah. videos. So I'm like, they're, I'm spending, they're doing the same thing as everybody else now. Yeah. I got rid of Inst- like other social media yeah. platforms for just like a month, the last month or so, obviously. And I was on in LinkedIn all you the can time because I didn't take I that one off. Well, wow, that was LinkedIn wild. is the leading social media platform. I mean, it's right like neck. The, it's like neck and neck. widely with, used it's or something? Neck, yeah, it's neck and neck with Facebook. I mean, just as many people use it and at just as often. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yes. So you didn't get off anything, Jared. Well, you're I, right up there I with did. I got off Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. Well, but, um, <laughs> I think it's just because, like, I mean, it's a professional based yeah. platform. Yeah. People are working. Working is our lives. Sure. And so it, I guess it, the... It makes sense. Well, all of these things are can be easy to excuse. The, the biggest lesson that I want to take away from this and the social media usage is take control of your time. Yeah. Most of us, like Anja said, wow, I've already been on here 15 minutes. Whatever your number is, it's probably more than you think. That yeah. was my biggest takeaway looking at this. Even for me, someone yeah. who is, I've cut out Instagram, I've cut out Facebook, I'm only on LinkedIn. But then if I look at my phone, because your phone will tell you, mm-hmm. and I'm going, wow, I was on LinkedIn for seven hours last week? Mm-hmm. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. You know, I was on LinkedIn for... Five hours? You know, how did I do that? What? Where's that going? Take captive of your time. And our quick tips as we just give you some, the, the highest levels here, Getting Things Done is a book that everyone should read. I've said it here before. I'll say it again. If you are looking for a time management book mm-hmm. or resource, there are lots of good ones, but skip those and go to the best. Getting Things Done. Trust me, there was a yep. time in my life that I was so overworked, overwhelmed that I made myself physically ill. Gave myself shingles because I was working myself to death. And I yep. said, I've got to take control of my time. Time management was the answer. And I looked up this book, Getting Things Done. I read probably 75 books on time management over the course of three years. Getting Things Done was the absolute best. It is a good one. David, I just to add to that. I thought you were going to I do. No, I it. do. There. So there's one I've recommended to people. Okay. Um, and this is a very common one you've heard before, but The Ruthless. Ruthless mm. Elimination of Hurry. I love that book. Mm. It's Absolutely. a really good one. It is written by a pastor. For, mm-hmm. So some people think it's like religious. It only, it's it's not actually not. Mm-hmm. It's not. So I, I recommend it to people, what, regardless of your yeah, faith background. And every single one of them have loved it. A few of our own staff members have just loved it's it. It's really good. It, if this episode here is interesting to you in terms of just media con- consumption yeah. and kind of the last few episodes, even of like life hacks and things to kind of implement in your days. That one is a great one. To it check is a out great as well. resource. I think yeah. getting things done is more of like a, it's not, a, it doesn't read like a textbook, but it's more like a textbook. Yeah. You know, is. where it's like, wow, this is a game plan. He has an entire system. It's the getting more things like done productivity system. almost. It I is would productivity. Consider. It's the, the tagline is the art of stress-free living, yeah. but mm-hmm. the quick takeaways and Jess, I know we've been through this. Do you, recall we've talked about this before which you've lived a lot of life since then but do you what's your number one takeaway from getting things done i don't remember reading that well that's okay we well maybe you didn't read it i don't maybe think it's i just, did just, maybe just from she the knows we she just doesn't author, know it's getting things book. done it's if it's in your head it does not count oh yes well yeah, i, I say she i knows. allude to you when i think about that oh, well, okay. so, but that's no, I, was saying no she knows, I knew yeah. there was no way you could have come up with that on your own well unnecessary i'm just kidding um, no, but that's not, that's not for me. I do. Um, I do say it a lot. I say it so much. Well, that's like John Maxwell. He used to say, um, I was in a session with him and he said, I get quoted a lot, but I don't think I come up with those quotes. He was like, here's how you do it. You quote somebody the first time, the second time you say, uh, you know, someone said the third time you say, I've heard someone say the fifth time you say, it's like, I always say, and he's like, then people just start giving you that. all sorts of credit. So I did not say if it is in your, I did not originate that thought. That's from Getting Things Done by David Allen, Mm -hmm. but it is one of my big takeaways. Here are the three quick takeaways. If it's in your head, it does not count. If Mm -hmm. you live by nothing else, that can change your life right now. Think Mm -hmm. of all the things that are in your head. I think of things like when I walk out the door and Jen says, hey, by the way, can you pick up milk on your way home? Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Boom. And I walk out the door and I leave. I get home. I walk in. I'm king of the castle, ready for my children and my wife to love me, adore me, give me hugs, kisses, and wonderful homemade treats. And Jen says, did you get the milk? And I say, crud. No, I forgot. 
No, I didn't. And I turned back around and I <laughs> go to the milk. store. <laughs> got milk? I did not. Why? Because I kept that information in my head. Mm-hmm. Hey, aunt, will you shoot me that email? Yeah, sure. No problem. Cool. Mm-hmm. Next day. Hey, aunt, where's that email? Oh, crud. I forgot yep. to do that. Now, aunt isn't guilty of that. I'm guilty of mm. it. Why? Because I don't write it down. And it's like, oh, crud. Yep. I meant to give you that, Jess. I will do that. If it's in your head, it does not count. You can have an old school paper system. I will admit I've tried electronic. It doesn't work for me. I'm a pen and paper kind of guy. If I don't physically write it down, it just doesn't work for me. So that's the way I roll. If you are an electronic note taker, use that. There are lots of apps, but if it's in your head, it does not count. Number two, the one minute rule. This is my favorite. This was your favorite? Yes. Okay, I had them back. I had yeah, back. This one's my favorite. The one minute rule is what, Jess? Um, if it takes you less than a minute to do, do it right now. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. Super simple, but can change your life. It's things like the email. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting at your desk when someone walks by and says, hey, we shoot me that email. Yep. Just just do it. Yep. Boom. If it's in your head, it does not count. If it takes less than a minute, do it right now. And the last takeaway is his entire system. I'll just give you the overview. It's do, delegate, defer. When you're making your weekly plan, you're thinking of what you need to accomplish. Everything that is on your list should have do, delegate, or defer. Either do, it goes somewhere in your calendar. If it's not written down, it doesn't count. If it's delegate, you should talk to somebody about that's their responsibility. And delegate isn't just, oh, I'm an overseer and I'm assigning people things. Delegate can be, oh, I'm in a project with this team. Mm -hmm. It's not my turn, but I need to know that information. Delegate, hey, Jess, when can you give me that information? Okay, great. But now I know when I'm going to get the information. Mm -hmm. And finally, defer are things that uh, there's no way I'm going to get to this. You know, really my life hack that I want to close out here with We're talking about viewing yourself differently, getting things done, time management. And I don't know if this is just universal. I'm curious because we have different ages here and different places in life. But at least for my place in life, and I'm thinking of like me and my wife. We just try to do too much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And this is the defer piece. Do delegate defer. Whatever you got on your list, do yourself a favor. And when you write that list, just take off 20%. Mm -hmm. Um, Just take it off right off the bat. Like if you're, I I encourage people to take one hour at the end of the week or on a Sunday, the beginning of the week, and you're, you're actually mapping out your week. What's going where, what are your appointments? What are the most important priorities? We often, we prioritize. We say, oh, this is most important. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. But what we don't do is often give ourselves the permission to look at that bottom half of the list and go, you know what? Yeah. Instead of cramming it in, just take it off of there. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. That's defer. Yep. It might not mean you take it off forever, but you're taking it off for now. Say, I am not doing it this week, and I'm giving myself permission to not feel bad about not getting that done this week. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Those are the high, those are the high levels from getting things done. Yeah. Ladies, you got any quick tips for everybody? We're talking time management. Obviously, it's a huge topic we could talk about forever. Their entire podcast dedicated to it. Yeah. But for our purposes today and optimizing our life, what are your biggest life lessons with time management? Got anything to add? Off that last thing you just said, yeah. do delegate defer, which is one of my favorite things that we talk about a lot. Um, bringing it actually to strength finders. So mm. we we haven't talked about it on here in a while. We but haven't. So, I'm a certified strength finder coach. Shout out to Paradigm Shift. Reach out to us if you want a session. Absolutely. Second commercial for you, Jess. But in that different 34, you know, strengths that you can have, I have both adaptability okay. really high. Yeah. And activator really high. Okay. Which is great for me. And then also gets in my way because I shift to whatever problem is happening now. Okay. Which is really great if you're the one with the problem. If you're not, which is often like my dear friend Lindsay. She's like, I've been waiting for you to do that thing that you need to do that you, it didn't, it's not a big problem. So it's not highest on your list, but I'm waiting on you for it. And Mm. so one of my coaches, when I was working with her on just like, I have this great ability to adapt to, I can come in the office and it does not bother me that what I ended up doing all day was not at all what I planned to do. That doesn't bother me. But she said, use your activator when you come to the office first thing in the morning and narrow down Everything you have, right? What is the most important thing to do today? And it's one thing. Like, what is the most important thing? So for me, you know, yesterday, my biggest important thing was I have to get that document to Lindsay before. And I have to do it right when I walk in, the activator piece, because I won't get it done otherwise. And so I think taking that list and narrowing it down even more, like, to your day, because I like to do it by the week, like you just said. Mm -hmm. But then I try to bring that do piece into a daily practice of what is the number one like I, I actually won't let myself leave the office until this one thing is done, regardless of all these other things that happen. And what does that one thing have to be today? And I really try not to veer from it. And that, that becomes really helpful, especially if you are somebody who's more active to the moment. People are in, off, you're in and out of your office a lot. You're quicker to problem solve, quicker to jump in meetings. What is that one 
thing. And I, I, yeah, really try to stick to. That's good stuff. Ladies, anything to add here? Yeah, I would say, um, I think it's also really important that that delegate piece that you said yeah. mm -hmm. is actually so important because I think leaders are often like, okay, great. I will add that to my to-do list. No problem. Oh yeah. I'll let me add that to my to-do list as well. And your to-do list becomes so long that you, like you said, you're never going to get to all of it. There's going to be 20%. That's never going to happen. And then you're just like, I'm stressed all the time because my to-do list is, if you're like me, at least it's, it gets overwhelming quickly because I'm a time optimist. You know, yeah, and I'm well, like, like that yeah, that'll, that'll take five that minutes, you know, and it's not. That is I not a five minute phrase. thing, you know, and so uh, which is why I need to wake up, you know, like we were talking about last episode, two yes. hours of work. Cause I'm a time optimist. I'm like, that'll take. Yeah, nah, I'll take two minutes. I'll be f no, it doesn't. And I need to know that. <laughs> That's the right? thing with the one minute rule. Yeah. Be honest about how long it's going to mm, take. Yeah, that, that was kind of where I was at, at the beginning of like habiting that rule, like. It, that's not going to take you a minute. So yeah. be realistic about how long things are. Gonna okay. Take. Yeah. But then the things that do take a minute, just do it. Yeah. You know, just yeah. don't, you, it hangs over you and you're like, ah, no, it's going to take a minute. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah, but delegate, like do that. Be okay with delegating mm -hmm. and saying, Hey, oh, yeah. I'm, can you do this? How's your plate? Yeah. Can you take a thing or two off of this? Um, yeah. because then I think that frees you up what you were saying on like, you can actually get stuff done. Yeah. You can prioritize. You can say, these are the three most important things that have to happen. Um, oh Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love the phrase time optimist. So if you are out there <laughs> listening to the Good Leader podcast, I would assume many people listening to this yeah. type of podcast are time optimists. Mm -hmm. You know, you just They're think, my oh, I can no get time. that done. That's not going to take yeah. anything. I'll knock that out. I'll add that to my list. Well, we are your people and we know what that feels like. And yep. even in listening to this, you're like, yeah, but I am really good at getting things done. Yeah, you are, but you're not as good as you think you are. So <laughs> thanks for listening today. You are just like a professional athlete, you have autonomy over your schedule. Don't judge them, judge yourself and go out there and be a good leader.